Welcome to Dallas, where chants of Boomer Sooner and Hook'em Horns echo through the Cotton Bowl as the Oklahoma Sooners and the Texas Longhorns battle for the 89th time in the 1994 Red River Shootout. Let's now join commentators Mark Jones and Tim Brandt with the opening kickoff in one of the greatest rivalries in all of sports here on ESPN Classic. John Makovic is the head coach of the University of Texas in his third year at that school, going without the jacket and tie today. And Gary Gibbs is in his sixth year at Oklahoma, the former linebacker at that school, a member of their national championship back in the 70s. We are set for the opening kickoff. Tim, a look at some of the keys. Well, for Texas, simplify and execute for James Brown because he's the guy that's starting and he's only had 11 plays, all handoffs. Defensive success, we talked about stopping the run. Oklahoma, they have to get some offensive balance. They've been passing more than they've been running. They don't want that. And confuse and pressure Brown, that's the obvious. You have a young quarterback, get after him, confuse him. This is Phil Dawson kicking off for Texas. P.J. Mills at the goal line for the Sooners. Mills dancing and brought down at the 17-yard line. Starting quarterback is Garrick McGee for Oklahoma. Last week, he was 11 of 13, threw an interception on his first pass, then an incompletion, then proceeded to make 11 consecutive completions. So he is on a bit of a hot streak right now. You'll see the full house set, wishbone, backsogram, three backs, everything in this new multiple set. First down and 10 for Oklahoma. Ball at the 17-yard line. The backs are Moore and Allen. And we have flags on the very first play. An emotionally charged atmosphere here today at the Cotton Bowl. I believe there was movement before the snap. Dead ball. False start. Offense. Still first down. That's just emotion. Big game like this, everybody's charged, not concentrating. Lloyd Dale, our head referee today, making the call. Oklahoma with a lack of discipline when it comes to penalties sometimes, eight per game. That can cost you in key situations. They hand it off. Tyson King with the big hit right off the bat. Moore lucky to get back over the line of scrimmage that time, picking up maybe two yards. A look at the backs and receivers for Oklahoma. Albert Hall set to become one of the top five receivers at that school, along with Alan Moore, Alexander, and P.J. Mills. And up front, this is an offensive line that has the potential to be one of the best in Sooner history, but they are inconsistent and underachieving right now. Second down and 14 for Oklahoma. McGee back to pass. Completes it incomplete into the hands of his tight end, Steve Alexander, who flat out dropped it. That's probably been the most or biggest problem area for Oklahoma this year is the tight end. They've been playing all four, so they decided to start Steven Alexander. He's just a freshman. They call him Alexander the Great, but again, that was not good concentration. He should have made that catch. You would think they would have to keep that guy, McGee, out of third and long situations. Earlier, the coaches were telling us that they put him in poor situations early in the year and put too much pressure on him. So they're going to try and alleviate some of that pressure today. Third down and long. And more flags. You know, I think this is on the quarterback. I think McGee moved. He was waiting for the snap. It didn't come. He moved. Five yards, Joe. Still third. Dead ball, false start. So on its opening series, Oklahoma with two penalties already. Now Texas won the toss and elected to defer. So Oklahoma's going to be punting into the wind. So Texas is going to have great field position. You'll be able to watch McGee, the quarterback, move. He wants the ball now, and he's not getting it. That draws the defense off, but it was movement on McGee. The backs are split this time behind the quarterback, McGee. A draw play to Gerald Moore, nothing happening. Texas with a big play. Shane Rink making the tackle. Tim Daughtry into punt now for Oklahoma. 
Yeah, but the bottom line is, because of that series, Texas is going to have great field position. He's kicking into the winds, any kind of return, and they'll be in Oklahoma territory. He has never punted before, Daughtry has. The regular punter is Scott Glenn. Back for Texas is Jackson. A poor punt, which bounces at the 31-yard line. And it takes a Texas bounce, and Tim, as you mentioned, they will have fantastic field position. A 25-yard punt, nothing on the return. Texas with the wind at its back on this first series. And here comes the quarterback that we talked about earlier. James Brown, number five. I feel good. <laughs> He's a six foot, 185 pound freshman. He was the top ranked high school quarterback in Texas. He's only had 11 plays. They've all been handoffs. Kemp and Walker working out of the eye behind the quarterback. Jackson in motion. Hands it off on first down to Gaping Hole. Roderick Walker down to the 16 yard line. And a first down after that 14 yard pickup. The tackle made by Cedric Jones. Oklahoma does not look ready. They're confused. They're not playing defense. Watch this hole open up. I mean, he just cuts back against an over-aggressive defense that was stemming that way. They were actually slanting away from the play, and they have the big gainer. And with that first down, a little confidence for the starting quarterback, James Brown. Hands it off again to Walker. This time, Walker brought down to the 14-yard line by Cedric Jones one more time. Just underway here at the Cotton Bowl. I'm Mark Jones, along with Tim Brands and Dean Blevins for the 89th edition of the Red River War. There's a look at James Brown from Beaumont, Texas, 185 pounds. There's a perception out there that he is more of an option quarterback, but that is not true. He's a very good thrower, and he can throw the touch passes as well as go deep. He doesn't appear to be in any hurry to throw his first collegiate pass. Let's see if we get it here. Out of the offset eye, the backs. Brown to pass. Completes it down to the 10-yard line. That's Juan Kemp, the starting fullback. Kemp, a 5'10", 210-pound senior. Let's meet the backs and receivers for the Texas Longhorns. Priest Holmes, Juan Kemp, Pat Fitzgerald, Lavelle Pickney is a very rare combination of size and speed. And Eric Jackson, another wideout. Blake Brockemeyer, one of the top left tackles or offensive linemen in the country, period, up front on that Texas offensive line. Brockemeyer bench presses 445 pounds and squats 600 pounds. All men. Third down and four to go. What a pass by Brown. He gets it off, but he's short of the first down. A little... A little shot put almost, Tim. He showed a lot of composure. Watch this. He can feel the pressure now. First, he takes the drop. It's a five-step drop. Now, he feels the pressure coming from both sides and the middle. So he steps up and just does a little basketball pass, chest pass, and makes a completion. He looks very composed for a young guy. Drop back there. I will say this. He took all the snaps in practice this week. Fourth down and short. And they're going to go for it. Full house backfield. Three backs lining up in the eye. Two tight end set. I don't think Roderick Walker made it. The Oklahoma defense getting a huge surge up front. See if this serves as a wake-up call for the Sooners. This is a great surge, but the big thing is the linebackers filled, and they got the strong safety to come up and make the hit. And right now, we wait for the measurement as they bring in the chain gang. Gibbs, though, has to be concerned about the early lethargy of his team. Didn't make it. Oklahoma takes over. Um, I 
for some reason, Texas elects to go on fourth and short. Watch how Oklahoma fills. It's a strong safety, 17. Henderson, who comes in over the top and actually stops the play. You see, he was the last hit. But with a young quarterback making his first start, why wouldn't you kick the field goal there, get some points on the board? Some interesting decision-making by head coach John Mathevic, which does not pay off. What they did is waste that great field position. Oklahoma with the ball in its own eight-yard line. They hand it off out of the wishbone. Number 25, James Allen. Is Texas defense going to have to stop that Oklahoma run today? Tony Brackens is the leader up front along with Clark and Thomas Baskin. There have been eight different starting linebackers this year for Texas. That tells you something about their injury situation at that position. And Bryant Westbrook is a very strong defender against the run and a very good cover guy as well in the secondary. McGee on the option and he pitches it to Allen who is out near the first down marker at the 16-yard line. He was finally brought down by Tyson King. It's a pretty good indication of what Oklahoma has done. They've gone to a more option offense because they were passing the ball too much and too early, and they became somewhat predictable with Garrick McGee. He's thrown almost 100 passes this year, which is unheard of for Oklahoma, so now they start running more and more option, and you can see it's difficult to defend. You've got to have a guy not only on the quarterback, but you have to assign a guy to the pitch man. 100 passes so far this year. Dean Blevins didn't throw that much in practice in his entire career. Oh, more in the backfield that time, and they run it. Let's go downstairs to Dean right now. Dean? Uh, Mark, that point was correct. I didn't throw, it, <laughs> <laughs> didn't throw that many. And, Tim, you bring up a good point. Why you, do you not kick the field goal? I think the thinking is that this is a Texas club that, uh, even though they, they've scored 30 points a game, that I think Texas believes that 20 points will win this game, and they were looking for six instead of the three. And in retrospect, you can sure second-guess it, but I think that's their mentality. New quarterback, though, you want to put those points on the board right now. Take some of the pressure off him. And speaking of the quarterback, Garrett McGee walking away and calling a timeout. Getting to Back in Dallas, folks, i got to tell you that my two partners, Dean and Tim, tried to sneak on that ride for Children's Fair, but it uh, didn't work, did it, Tim? No, I'll tell you, you take more hits on that than you do on the football field <laughs> with Oklahoma, Texas. That thing will make you sick. <laughs> also, don't carry change in your pockets. Well, no, that'll shake it out. Mark was standing under it with a bucket. <laughs> the nose of the ball on the 39-yard line for Texas. Third down and two. A fumble. Holmes gets it back and he's brought down at the 50. So Texas blows it. A tackle made by Simpson. Deal? What is the deal here? Watch it zone blocking. Everybody goes to the right. And he just takes his eye off the ball and looks for a hole rather than first securing the ball, pulling it in, tucking it away, and then locating the hole. Just start running in that direction. You know where the six hole is you just go toward it but keep your eye on the ball twice now Tim we've seen bats not be able to get a hand on the handoff and fumble it just underway here in the second quarter Dwayne Bossick in the punt a low line drive punt back to the 10 and the Sooners bring it out to the 12 yard line a 40 yard punt and forward on the return by P.J. Mills. Let's go down to Dean. Guys, we've talked about the walking wounded for Texas. One player that is a really significant injury, standing in the black workout fit here is Mike Adams, the wide receiver kick returner. He is a tremendous football player. He has a knee injury out one or two more weeks, but with he and Marins out, they are really hurting offensively. Well, the quarterback situation, and you mentioned Adams, but you know, Pinkney and Adams, that story's been well documented, but UT also lost Justin McLemore and freshman Wayne McGarity with serious knee injuries. That's their quarterback and top three receivers from last year. And it hurts the quarterbacks because they don't have the opportunity to work with any continuity. Oklahoma on the handoff on first and 10. James Allen is brought down at the 15-yard line. Colorado still rolling over Missouri. There's the big upset of the day. You know, this is the third time Oklahoma has started inside the 20-yard line this afternoon. Very bad field position. 
Derek McGee is back at quarterback now. And he looks to pass. A great diving grab by Albert Hall. A first down Oklahoma. 18 yards on the pickup. And you see why the Sooner coaching staff calls him the leader. Pressure came from Baskins, Clark, and Brackens, number 98. But then watch the pass. He just steps up. He's under pressure. Throws it with all arm. And then Albert Hall makes a nice catch. Gain of 18. You know, he averages 15 yards every catch. Excellent speed for Albert Hall. But a nice play by McGee to get it off. McGee hands it off this time on first down. Nice cut. And James Allen is off to the races. That's why they call him Lightning. <laughs> Biggest play of the day. They call Allen Lightning. They call more Thunder. He got help from Thunder. Now watch this. Once he gets inside Westbrook with the block, cuts it back outside. The only thing that can stop him now is the angle that the Texas players are taking. He's got that great speed. Another couple of steps. He would have been past Trey Thomas, number 17. James 6'1", 207 pounds, and runs a 4'4'40". Not bad, following the long line of great Sooner running backs. Sims, Washington, on the option. Allen again. Oh, makes a nice shake. And bulls his way down to the 26. You know, Mark, the running backs at times have been reminiscent of the Sooner glory years. I mean, James Allen at 740 yards as a freshman. Jeff Frazier, who returns from that knee injury, he is a tremendous talent. And now they're utilizing it in his multiple sets. So you're right, it is reminiscent of the glory years at Oklahoma. Bad to the bone. Wishbone, it is. Allen's averaging over five yards per carry. And they line up out of the eye this time. Moore is the fullback. Allen, the tailback. Allen again, right up the middle. He's brought down at the 23-yard line. Allen coming off a 16-carry, 111-yard performance, two-touchdown performance last week against Iowa State. Today, eight rushes for a total of 53 yards. Yeah, and that offensive line's helping him tremendously. You know, it's a huge offensive line. 309-pound stamps, Cavill's 310, Langston's 270, Overton's 272, and Conrad's 311. And they all have good feet. They can move. The offensive linemen, Tim, in college football seem to be getting bigger and bigger. They hand it off. This is Gerald Moore. Touchdown, Sooners. Gerald Moore on a long scamper for the touchdown. Scott Blanton in for the extra point. And Oklahoma leads it 7 to nothing over Texas. It's Back in Dallas, 7-0, Texas trailing at halftime. Moments ago, Dean Blevins spoke with a focused Gary Gibbs. First off, the condition of your quarterback, Coach? Uh, he's going to be all right. He got hit in the jaw area, but he'll be fine. Shea Morenz apparently will not uh, return. That seems to be a, a major factor in this ball game. Well, uh, Browns played very well. Their offense football team's really done a nice job moving the football. But so far in this first half, it's been field position and turnovers. What do you tell your club at half? Uh, protect the football and uh, take advantage of opportunities. All right, best of luck. All right, the only touchdown for Oklahoma came on a trap play. Watch 78. This is J.R. Conrad come down the trap here, and then Milt Overton will come back here and clear the way for Gerald Moore. Roll it. Watch, here goes 78. Here comes 74. Watch the block he throws, too. And then Moore slips through. Then he breaks three tackles on his way, uses that 230 pounds just to bull his way down into the end zone from 23 yards out. And that's our only touchdown today. And John Makovic has to get some offense and some scoring out of his unit. 
And Dean Blevins spoke with him moments ago as well. Coach, uh, Shea Morin's being out has to be a big factor. Will he play? I don't know if he'll play, but James Brown has done very well for us. He's only made one mistake. He's handled the ball well. I've been very uh, pleased with his performance. How do you decide if Morin's will go back in? Oh, I would just play it by ear, but James right now is doing everything that we need for him to do. Our defense needs to really get in the game this second half and help us out, though. Best of luck. Okay. You know, John Makovic has a penchant for saying the right thing at halftime, like against the Louisville game. Mike Adams was struggling, fumbled a couple of balls, dropped the punt, and he brought Adams up in front of the team at halftime and told Adams that he's part of the team. He's part of the family. He's back. Go out, relax, and have a great game. Well, in the second half, Adams did just that, and Texas went on to defeat Louisville. So Makovic hoping that he can press the right button this time at halftime and squeeze a win against Oklahoma. Jackson, one yard deep. Out to the 18-yard line, and that's where Texas will start off. Talked about some of the keys before the game started for Texas. They had to simplify and execute for James Brown in his first collegiate start. And then they needed some defensive success against the run. We amplified how they had struggled. You see that Brown comes out pretty well. 11 of 13, 85 yards, and then he did have the one interception. And Oklahoma just 29 yards rushing, but 189 total yards. Or 189 total yards. They suffered a little bit against the run. James Brown comes out to start the second half at quarterback. He saw his numbers and looked poised in performing. Jackson in motion. The play action. It's a waggle. Wide open to his tight end, Bradley. And Bradley has a first down at the 33 yard line. A pickup of 16 yards. And Tim, a look at the first half numbers. Well, you see they're pretty even play-wise, and yet the time of possession balanced out as well. I thought at one point in the second quarter when we looked at this that it would be dominant by OU on the time of possession, but that balanced out pretty well. But it's been the rushing yards that we talked about just a second ago and the keys to success. Texas has not been able to stop the OU run. 189 yards. And last week, they ran for 334 yards. So they are past that pace. First and 10 at the 34 for the Horns. Texas has won four of the last five meetings against Oklahoma. They run it on the belly play, and a flag is down at the 35-yard line. That was Priest Holmes, brought down by David Campbell. That kind of blocking, they didn't need the Priest. They needed the Monsignor or maybe a Bishop. <laughs> Couldn't get through. There was absolutely nothing open. Ah, but they get the break, the face mask. Lavelle Pinckney getting a breather on the sideline and now coming back into the game. Bringing a play in. Now he has two catches. That's it. Defense, repeat first down. He has two catches today, Pinckney does. I would think they want to get him more involved. It's a mismatch. Run the 6-5 split end against those two cornerbacks. They're only 5-10, 5-9. Pinckney, a tower of strength and perseverance, emerging out of uh, some very humble beginnings and background back in Washington, D.C. Tossed to the short side of the field. Roderick Walker brought down at the 39-yard line a swarm of Sooner tacklers led by Tyrell Peters. Boy, Peters played that just like you would write it up on a defensive sketchboard. Just play, slide down, follow the play, slide, play it inside out, then come up and just make the tackle. And he did it with authority. Tim Peters at 218 pounds has the speed of some defensive backs. And Shamer Renz, you know, <laughs> they wanted to keep him out of the game last week, but the problem was they couldn't find him because he was hiding from the team doctors he once he was hurt. Hurt that knee every time he saw the doctors coming, he'd walk down the other side, get lost in the crowd, and run back out on the field. His understudy, James Brown, meanwhile, looking to pass. And he bounces one in that is incomplete at the 48-yard line, just a little bit short. Eric Jackson, the intended receiver. <laughs> Athleticism, quick feet to get back out on the waggle, and it's worked several times, and they keep going back to it. Keeps the pressure off of him. 
and Texas's future conference rival, Colorado, future you know, Big 12 rival. Colorado just seems destined this year. Had that last second win against Texas last week, and of course the uh, the Hail Mary pass against Michigan. They've kind of turned into America's team. Third down conversion opportunity for Texas. Out of the shotgun. Brown with wide open real estate. James Brown feels good. A first down at the 46 after a 14 yard pickup. Again, using the quick feet. They had trips, three receivers to the bottom of the screen, but he can feel all the pressure flowing around him, so he just tucks it away. They're having a tough time containing James Brown. He's just a red shirt freshman. Boy, he got tagged at the end of the play. Showing that quickness, utilizing it, maximizing it. First down, three James Brown. Hardest working quarterback on the field today. 13-10 remaining in the third quarter. Lucas in the backfield now, at fullback. Giving his tail back a nice lead block. Walker runs down to the 38-yard line, where he's brought down by Peters once again. I'll tell you, that scramble by Brown is the first third down conversion for Texas today. A gain of three on first down. Brown, a 185-pound freshman. Backing him up is another freshman, John Dutton. Second down and seven. Off the tailback, Lucas the fullback. Pickney split wide to the top of the screen. Little play action down the middle. Pickney interfered with. No Darius. question. No question about it. Darius Johnson was all over him. And again, it's because it's a mismatch. Johnson is fighting for his life. It'll be first down Texas. I would continue to go back to this. All right, watch it from the secondary's view. Brown drops, now watch. Here comes Pinckney, boom, contact before the ball ever gets there. And the flag came immediately. Crowd doesn't like it, but no question. Darius Johnson jumped him. Keep in mind, Johnson's 5'9", Pinckney's 6'5". And he's a wide body. Look at that. I'm telling you. 200. Gives concerns. Oklahoma, a team which is much penalized, averaging eight penalties a game for over 80 yards, approaching that number right now. Priest Holmes now the tailback. He gets the draw. And he's brought down right at the 29-yard line by Mario Freeman, who is one of their better linebackers against the run. He says, not here, not today. No, see, and they're bringing those linebackers a lot, too, whether it's a run or a pass. Oklahoma likes to blitz. You know, the rule goes like this. You blitz a poor passer, you cover the field against good ones. But they've got a quarterback. James Brown, who has very little experience, so they're trying to bring the blitz, but they're showing a lot of different looks now. They're starting to mix things up. Been impressed with his ball handling today. Second down and 11. Holmes, five carries, minus eight yards total. Jackson in motion, the pitch to Priest. He's got to the corner. Out of bounds at the six yard line. said McGee was holding on too late for Oklahoma on the pitch. Watch this. He feels the pressure right away and gives the ball to Priest right away. Now Holmes can get out to the corner. Once he gets the ball right now, then it's up to the runner. Watch Pickney now. He's trying to come and cut off the corner. Gets a little bit of a block, just enough to free Holmes around the, the corner. First and goal for the Horns. Pickney split to the top side of your screen and here is Walker Surrod out at the three-yard line tackled by Fogel yeah see Texas starting to sell out now starting to put it on the line we see Priest Holmes in this series he's playing with a hip injury 
Didn't even know if he was going to play today. John Makovic not showing a lot of emotion, but I'll guarantee you his insides are churning. The last time Texas was this deep in Oklahoma territory, they gambled on fourth and short and came away with no points. Pickney split to the bottom of your screen. Out of your picture, second and goal. Jackson in motion. Holmes didn't get in. Brought down at the one-yard line. Will be third and goal. Interesting thing about Priest Holmes, last year he went by the name Anthony Holmes. This year he chose to use Priest because there's an incoming freshman by the name of DeAndre Holmes, so it would have been confusing. Got Holmes and Frazier in the same game. <laughs> and Texas looking for the knockout punch right here. Third and goal. They didn't get in. Peters once again strong against the run. And this time the field goal unit comes in. Oklahoma has allowed only 126 yards rushing a game. They're solid. Look at the pressure. Boom, they're coming from the outside. They've got the cornerback, Denton, 23, slamming it in. Now watch 44 Freeman. Slide, slide, inside out. Gets help. There's Peters, 45. They all get to the ball. Five guys in on the tackle. And now in comes Phil Dawson, who's 9 of 10 on the year, along of 50. Chad Lucas will be his holder. This one coming from 19 yards out. He's only missed one all year. Lucas, the holders of former quarterback, watch the fake. Instead, Dawson drills it right down Main Street. And the Longhorns are finally on the board, but you would think they come away just a touch disappointed. A look at the largest Ferris wheel in the Western Hemisphere, the Texas Star. Some 250 feet tall. And from there, you can get a great view of the Cotton Bowl. They say three, three million people will visit that state fair. I had a chance to get on that thing this morning. I know, you wouldn't pay my way. <laughs> Scoring drive, 11 plays, 80 yards. You see, it took just over five minutes. Eight runs, two passes, and the field goal. The Oklahoma defense holding as Texas started with first and goal on the seven-yard line. Phil Dawson in to kick it off for Texas. Back deep, P.J. Mills and Jeff Frazier for Oklahoma. Dawson has a strong leg. A lot of his kickoffs go into the end zone. And he could really place the ball wherever they want it. This one, he hangs up high to Gerald Moore at the 18. He fumbles it. Luckily, Oklahoma, for their sake, recovers the ball. But again, they put it on the ground. And we go downstairs to Dean Blevins. Dean? Guys, Oklahoma has 46 Texans on its roster. Texas has one Oklahoman. He's this guy. Well, I mean, we did have a good shot of him, number 54. Can you see him there? He's a center out of Weatherford, Oklahoma. His name is Russell Gascam, an outstanding student. Lived in Austin through his junior year in high school. But 46 Texans on Oklahoma's roster. They will cross the border and get a few players. Moore and Allen in the backfield. McGee to pass, complete to Moore. He has a first down at the 27-yard line. Tim, a look back at some of the important things in this game. Well, we talked about what Oklahoma had to do to win this thing. Offensive balance, and they cer certainly are doing that. The bad thing they've had is field position. Six of seven drives started inside the 20-yard line. Now, you can see what they've done here. As far as rushing the football, they've been able to do it. And they've done pretty well protecting the quarterback. 926 remaining in the third quarter. On the option and a flag down. Well, the fourth time today that we've seen that happen. Try and figure this one out.
John Makovic and the offensive coordinator trying to work some sets, see what's been successful. Dead ball, illegal procedure, offense, still first down. Penalties continue to kill Oklahoma. I think what John is concerned with there, Makovic, they were down inside the 10 and couldn't push it in. So he and Gene Dahlquist now sitting there trying to scheme things for the short yardage and power offense. Sooners with the ball now. First and 15. McGee on the option, pitches and loses it. Jeff Allen fields it again. And it's knocked out at the 24-yard line. What Allen has had to play shortstop a couple times today. What a great play by Allen to get this ball. Pressure's, pressure's coming off the corner. Watch this, right here, boom. Now, that's going to force him to pitch before he wants to. He gets rid of it because he knows he's going to get hit. Never locates Allen, just throws it out there where he thinks he's going to be. And Allen does a nice job picking that thing up and getting some yardage back. He actually got three. Approaching nine minutes remaining in the third quarter. Mills and Hall split to the bottom of your screen. Four. Down to the 30-yard line. He'll be about six yards short of the first down. Third and six coming up. Downstairs, back to Dean. Guys, the Oklahoma offensive coordinator, Watson Brown, is actually calling the audibles for the quarterback. He did it last year for senior K.O. Gundy, so it's not really anything unusual for him. But if you'll watch at the line of scrimmage, especially when the safety walks up and it's essentially an eight-man front, Watson Brown will change the play at the line of scrimmage, and Garrett McGee will then change it for the team. He hasn't executed the option very well, but they've had the right play call. Yeah, that's something they've done since Watson came to Oklahoma. They did that all last year as well. Here's McGee to pass now. Tipped and caught by Albert Hall right at the first down marker. This will depend on the spot. Hall, one of the clutch third down receivers for Oklahoma, the clutch one. Texas was sitting in the zone. They had the linebacker just waiting on Hall and made the stop. Good patience, knowing where that first down marker was and where he had to make the tackle. So Daughtry comes in to punt as Hall ends up about a yard short of the first down. Speaking of Watson Brown, his brother Mac got another big win at North Carolina today. Daughtry gets off a low line drive punt. Kale Gundy, who works very closely with Garrick McGee. Gundy played in this game last year. Starting to go to bat. Great all-conference leader, Kale Gundy. Pretty good cheerleader, too. Texas with the ball, first and 10 on their own 24. 7.42 remaining in the period. James Brown hands it off to his tailback, Walker. Who's brought down at the 21-yard line by Arthur Atkins, a 6'4", 270-pound junior. They run it to the short side of the field with Walker. Walker throwing his body forward out at the 27, two yards short of the first down, and down to Dean. Guys, most people thought there was a real good chance it would be sloppy today, that it would uh, certainly rain. We've had no rain whatsoever. What is a factor is we're going to take a look at the flags up there. The wind, it is, uh, I would guess, around 15 uh, gusting to 20 miles an hour, as if I know exactly. But it is about 15 to 20. And Texas will have the wind at its back in the fourth quarter. That has been huge in the history of that, this series. The wind really hadn't affected Brown's performance. He's 12 for 15, 101 yards. Third down and two. Jackson in motion. Brown's going to pass. Oh, he's going to keep it himself on the draw. A quarterback draw, and it proves to be a very wise play as Texas picks up the first down. The tackle made by Baron Tanner. Yeah, and that was a predetermined play. That was a draw from the get-go. They set it up in the shotgun. It looked like a passing down. Again, they used his athleticism and escapability to get through there and pick up the first. Move the chains. 
tell you, Brown's got, he's doing a heck of a job for his first collegiate start. Well, the Having yep. come into this game, 11 plays, all handoffs. The coach has told us not to be surprised by his poise because he did have a very good week of practice. He got himself prepared for this game. And it has been entirely his show today. Shane Morenz has not been on the football field. Good call here. Brown stepped up, took the timeout. He had two seconds left on the play clock. So rather than take the penalty, he called the timeout. Very nicely done. And Brown now talking things over with John Makovic. You know, Texas was playing for the national title four years ago against Miami here in the Cotton Bowl. Went through some tough times, but starting to come back now. Now looking at Brown going over top to Makovic. Thinking of Texas quarterbacks, think of Peter Gardere, who, Tim, interestingly enough, was the only Texas quarterback to win all four games against Oklahoma. Yeah, that string was broken last year, obviously, with uh, Gibbs and Oklahoma winning right here, holding, actually, Texas just to three points in the first half last year. Held him to seven here today. And we saw Cale Gundy, who played in this game last year for Oklahoma last year, he scored a couple of rushing touchdowns to lead his team to the victory. You know, it was interesting talking to the Texas people the other night about last week's game against Colorado. They said they kept coming back, kept coming back, and they said the teams the last couple of years wouldn't have done that. They wouldn't have been able to, to come back like that time and time again, but they have. They think they're just ready now to come over the hump, go back into the big time. It's first down and 10. After the timeout, here's Brown. Deep drop over the middle, complete to Pinckney. Lavelle Pinckney picks the ball out of traffic in the teeth of his own defense and picks up a first down of 17 yards. Fogel making the hit and the tackle. Pinckney's third catch of the game. Again, it's the mismatch. He's going to drag this across the Oklahoma zone. Watch this. Boom. Now he gets behind the linebackers. They keep the ball high. Anytime you're throwing a Pinckney, you want the ball to be above the 8 and the O. You want it to be up around the shoulders, above the head maybe. Use that height, that 6'5 advantage he's got. Six minutes to play now in the fourth quarter. Nose of the ball in the 49 of Oklahoma. Waggle, here's Brown. Incomplete at the 40-yard line to his tight end, Pat Fitzgerald. Good coverage that time by Rod Henderson, the strong safety. Texas fans, they wanted pass interference, but it looked like the timing was perfect. Contact was made on Fitzgerald at the same time of the impact of the ball. Look at some of the Texas fans who occupy the north half of this bowl. You know what I like about James Brown? I think the crowd likes it too. He is thrown with authority. I mean, he's a very confident guy. And he exudes that confidence while he's on the field. Players can feel it. Teammates can feel it. He's 13 of 17 for a total of 118 yards. And that one interception. Blitz coming from the backside. He gets it away in time and complete. Ho, Eric Jackson with a couple of moves and a first down for Texas. about a well-designed play. It's Pinkney who clears things out. Now here comes Jackson in motion. Now Pinkney will go deep. And now watch, Jackson cuts to the outside underneath of him. You see Pinkney's feet going, taking everybody deep. Just bring him underneath. Now watch what he does with the ball after he makes the catch. Never quits. Texas moving the ball. 5.20 remaining in the third quarter. Little mix up, but Brown makes something out of nothing and is brought down at the 30. Like he's tap dancing on a light bulb. He's got those quick feet. Never get too far off the ground. You know, if you're a defensive guy and you're playing against a guy like Brown, who's very shifty, very, very quick, what you have to do is break down and keep your vision on his numbers. Those numbers will never move. You watch his hips move or his feet, you're going to lose him. Keep an eye on those numbers, they don't move. Well, if there's anything out like that other James Brown, those hips really do shake. <laughs> Second down and six for Texas. Brown pulling out a little early. And they put it on the rug again. 
Now the question is, see, they're, they're fighting for a fumble. But there was a flag down. They called movement before the snap. So it's no play. It's a dead ball foul, no fumble. Talk about balance. Texas, 136 yards rushing, 133 yards passing. Great balance. Here's the call. Well, the ball was dead. False start on the offense. Still hanging down. Watch the movement. See, he's pulling out right now. See number five, Brown? He's pulling out before the snap. He expected on one. The ball didn't come till two. So they threw the flag. They were fortunate to get it back. And Makovic has to be very disappointed with the fact that they've self-destructed a couple of times deep in Oklahoma territory. Texas has had its opportunities. Second down and 11. Backs in the offset eye. Goes to the fullback, who's breaking it outside. Juan Kemp with a nice run, and he's brought down by Johnson, but not after a 13-yard pickup. Juan Kemp, the senior, with a big run. Hook them horns. Here come the Longhorns. That's Juan Kemp's only third carry today. Boy, he had some authority. Got outside the flood control, the containment, and put his shoulder down and bowled his way down inside the 25. Total yardage pretty much even on both sides. Everybody expected a high-scoring game today. Isn't that something? 7-3. Texas scoring 31 last week. Oklahoma 34. And between them, they only have 10 today. Well, they did it again. See, there's movement on that. Yeah, stop us if you've seen this before. While the ball was dead, false start, offense. Still first down. They're killing themselves, killing themselves. John McAvick, no wonder he's got gray hair. I tell you, he looks good for 51, doesn't he? Yes. Even with the stitches under his chin, huh? It's because he's a wine connoisseur. See, wine's good for you. See, it's good for your heart now. First and 15. They push it back five. Sprint draw to the tailback. Second down and long. You're thinking it's a passing situation, so... Most teams like to run. I'd go to Pickney. I don't care if they're expecting it or not. Out of the backfield instead. The fullback. Harris with a nice reception that time. Really swung his head around and made the catch. Kenny Harrison, well-designed play out of a split backfield. They did send Pinkney down to clear things out again, and they just came under in the flats. Another sellout crowd. Watching another competitive game here. Big third down play here. Huge. Out of the shotgun, Brown. Got him. Complete. Lucas. And he has the first down at the nine. But Brown has been the picture of poise in that pocket. You're in the secondary again. Watch number 11, the right hand of your screen. They're just going to sneak him right out underneath the linebackers. There he is. Nobody picks him up coming out of the backfield because they're too concerned with the big wide out. Had three receivers wide, then just sent Lucas out underneath. Now keep in mind what happened last time. Texas was this deep. They self-destructed. Could not get into the end zone. They can get a first down, though, without getting into the end zone. Walker looking for a hole. Bouncing it outside. A flag. It'll be a face mask. Walker earned two tough yards. And his neck will definitely be sore after that tackle. This will be half the distance to the goal line. question it was a face mask at the end of the play Anthony Fogel 
is the free safety, number nine. You see him saying, my bad, watch this, watch number nine come up here now and Walker right here, lock on the face mask. But sometimes, Tim, you just can't help it. It's almost instinctive. You just yeah. reach. You've got to re you've got to release it right away, and then it becomes incidental. Bottom line is, it's half the distance. Now the ball is inside the five at the four. And it is first down. Texas still looking for their first touchdown of the day. Fogel now raising his arms, trying to get some noise out of the Oklahoma fans in attendance. Gary Gibbs looking on. You know he's concerned. He said last year's win got the monkey off of his back. He said, but if I come back next year and lose, that thing's going to jump right back on. It's going to be a gorilla. <laughs> well, the monkey never far away in Oklahoma. Lots of expectations in that program. A counter. Walker. Can't get outside. And you know who made the play? It was Vogel, Tim. Vogel came up and slowed him down, and Peters came in to finish him off. What a great play by Vogel, too. He made the read and committed himself immediately, almost like a safety blitz. Look, now he's saying, my good, my good. <laughs> That's right, baby. Well, if you're going to take credit when you make a bad, take a bow when you do make one. Make it good. Off to talk, walk to walk. That's a big-time play by the safety. Pinckney is split wide to the bottom of your screen on second and goal. A trips left formation. Nowhere to go for Brown, but into the end zone. Brown scores. play 81 yard drive using up 725 on the clock and James Brown does a dance on Oklahoma to finish it off Dawson in for the extra point and Texas now with a three-point lead they lead it 10 to 7 another look He never. Another look at that impressive scoring drive by Texas, led by James Brown, the starting quarterback. He has gone the distance for the Horns today. You know what? He has a great feel for the field. On a touchdown play, it was a pass designed. He could actually feel that everything was covered on the left. He took it back to the right. There was nobody on. Hey, have the heck of a You know what? James Brown. Probably came into this game thinking that he has a little something to prove. People surely, some of them, critics, counted out Texas when they learned that Morenz was hurt and in serious condition would not be able to play today. But James Brown is filled in and seemed to be saying after that touchdown run, hey, how do you like me now? Yeah, put me into the mix. Let's start a quarterback controversy in Texas. <laughs> Great problem to have, John. Johnny Mack. Former coach in the NFL, Kansas City Chiefs, was at Illinois. 17 seconds remain in the third quarter. Texas leads by a field goal, 10 to 7. Dawson to kick off. This will be P.J. Mills. He goes east-west instead of north-south. The horn's starting to hook the Sooners just a little bit here. With 10 seconds remaining now in the quarter. You know what the biggest difference is? Time of possession. Look at this. Texas has held the ball 12 minutes and 40 seconds of this in the second half here. Just two minutes for Oklahoma. Boy, you can't score if you don't have the ball. 
And that offense then becomes your best defense. Sure does. And a nice balance in play selection by the Horns. Here comes McGee, who keeps it on the option and is brought down at the 19 by Chris Akins. And that's the last play of the third quarter. Game here at the Cotton Bowl between Oklahoma and Texas for 65 consecutive years. And for the 49th straight time, the game is sold out. And we have an exciting finish coming up as Texas leads 10 to 7 as we wait for the beginning of the fourth quarter. Oklahoma with possession. Again, starting deep in their own territory. Oklahoma with possession, but Texas with the momentum. Allen trying to steal some of that momentum back for the Sooners out to the 28-yard line as we look at the statistical breakdown, Tim. All right, take a look. These are the statistics now, but let me tell you that Texas outgained Oklahoma in the third quarter, 147 yards to just 32. I mean, they dominated. The difference thus far has been Brown at quarterback. He's 16 for 20. He's run for 39 yards and a touchdown. And Shea Moran still on the sidelines. Oklahoma handing it off to Moore, who barely got back to the line of scrimmage. Thomas Baskin, the 277-pound senior, making the tackle. This Texas defense has held up well this afternoon. And speaking of a guy holding up well despite a black eye and a shiner, Dean Blevins. Dean? Guys, great point, Tim, a minute ago about Oklahoma in the third quarter. The Sooners have only scored 14 points all season long in the third quarter. Haven't scored a single point in the first quarter. Don't know the problem. John McAvick will always have a great quarterback. He's got two of them now in Brown. All right, Dean, here's Allen on the halfback option. It's picked. Westbrook. Out of bounds at the seven. Westbrook with his second pick of the day. Halfback option pass and a bad decision by Allen. Now watch, Allen doesn't even tuck it away, doesn't hide it, throws a poor pass. Then Allen just stands around while Westbrook returns it. That's his second pick of the afternoon. Westbrook with two interceptions and this 28-yard return. From Oceanside, California, the man nicknamed Diesel. Yeah, the diesel. I tell you, that was a gift, though. I mean, that ball was thrown right to him. The Texas secondary has been the shining point and the bright spot of that defensive unit all year. Today playing without Joey Ellis, but Westbrook picking up the slack. Here's Priest Holmes. Holmes showing some of his speed, and they may add more yardage onto this one. Might have been another face mask. Holmes picked up 14. We'll wait for the call. It's another face mask against Oklahoma. Not making their coach happy. I'm Mark Jones along with Tim Brandt and Dean Blevins. The score here, Texas leading Oklahoma by a score of 10 to 7. We have 13.54 remaining in the fourth quarter in a surprisingly low-scoring game. Place mask, defense, first down. Just like the last drive when Texas scored, the face mask penalty against Oklahoma, half the distance moves the ball back inside the five-yard line to the four and gives them first down and goal. Bill Brown has been the quarterback all day long for Texas. Shane Morenz is watching out of the pro set. Walker down at the two-yard line. Couldn't quite get there. Brought down by Rod Henderson, who made a touchdown-saving tackle. Here's how we arrived at this point, 10-7. Gerald Moore made it 7-0 Oklahoma on a 23-yard run. And then Phil Dawson made it 7-3 with a 19-yard field goal. And back came James Brown. Dropped back and ran it in himself from nine yards out. 
Offensively, Texas has been a picture of balance. The toss to the short side of the field. Walker pushed out of bounds at the three. Good pursuit by the Oklahoma defense that time. Yeah, Texas has really had a problem down in the red zone. They've not been able to solve the Oklahoma defense. What they ought to do, and what could work, because this is a very aggressive defense, and they run to the football. Go ahead and send all the motion to the left side, fake it, and let Brown on a reverse, naked reverse, just take it into the corner. He's got great speed. It's third and goal here, Tim. We'll see if they choose to go that route. Very composed looking John McAvoy. Split back set. Lucas in motion. They give it into the end zone. Wide open touchdown, Texas. Fitzgerald. was set up nicely, well executed. The play action just froze everybody while Fitzgerald slipped through. Dawson with the extra point and a chance to give Texas a 10-point lead at 17-7. to He is perfect on the year and remains that way. And another look at that touchdown, Tim, by Fitzgerald. Brown is so coolly composed. Coming at you, reverse angle, let it roll, and here comes the play action. The fake, the linebackers are frozen. Brown just lays it up, Fitzgerald wide open. They didn't even see him coming. Texas leads by 10. Getting the man with the white shirt is former All-American defensive lineman Lucius Selman of Oklahoma. Ripping into his defense just a little bit. Delivering a strong message. Meanwhile, on the other side, John Makovic's got to be pleased because his Longhorns have had the ball 29 plays this half. Oklahoma just seven. Austin with the kick. P.J. Mills lets it go through the back of the end zone, and Oklahoma will start on its own 20. Texas trying to make it five out of six against Oklahoma. Oklahoma first and ten. Oklahoma has had poor field position all day. Hall with the reception. And he has a first down at the 43-yard line. A 24-yard pickup and a dart delivered by the quarterback, Garrett McGee. You know, if you're a Sooner with 13 minutes left in a ball game, you got to believe you're still very much in this ball game. Watch Hall now get the push off. They're playing soft. They've got a lead, so they're playing soft. They're getting off on the zone. He finds the open area. McGee puts the ball right there for him. Hall out of Bay City, Texas. Of course, Gibbs has to be kicking himself right now. It was a trick play that set up the Longhorns touchdown on a halfback option pass. And here's Moore. Trying to get some more. Yeah, out of bounds at the 48, and there's a flag down. I believe it's going to be holding against the Sooners. Once again, penalties killing Oklahoma. They average eight penalties a game. Is that something, Tim, as a coach, that you try to tell them not to do? Or if you mention it, do they end up doing it even more and being conscious of it? Well, there's... Here's a call. Holding by the offense. Repeat first down. I mean, which way do you go on that? Coaches differ on that. They don't want to plant the seed, make a big issue of it, where you start thinking about it, become tentative but they do make them aware of it. It's just concentration. Watson Brown's offense. Nine penalties today against Oklahoma. They're one above their average. And Brown's offense with only seven points today. Complete. It's Albert Hall again. Another first down. Down to the 43-yard line and a 21-yard pickup. He did 20, got 21. Again, it's a soft zone. Hall finds the open area. The seam, and McGee just puts it there for him. Right now, Texas playing a little bit soft defensively. 
Derek McGee has looked very solid on the last two passes. 12 and a half minutes to play in the fourth quarter. They hand it off. And maybe a loss of a yard that time. Allen did not get to the hole. Outstanding play by Thomas Baskin. Just defeated his blocker, got off the block, and made the tackle. Allen never had a chance. Allen, another one of those quick Oklahoma backs, wins a 4-5. Yeah, but if you can't get that 4-5 started by the time the other guy's making the tackle, that speed's not going to help you. Had a couple of touchdowns last week, but has been shut out so far today. He to pass, and he'll take off. He got a nice block from Allen and makes it down to the 33-yard line. Dean Blevins, what's new downstairs? Well, guys, you notice the E on the Oklahoma offensive players' helmets. Watson Brown said that he wanted to get these guys more fired up, and so the E is to uh, show them enthusiasm. So anytime he feels like they need a surge, he taps his head, and McGee goes to the huddle and says, guys, let's pick it up. I think... Watson Brown's going to be tapping his head a lot in the fourth quarter. Yeah, but too often for Watson, that E has stood for error. Eight right. penalties. Today they've got nine. First and ten after that first down. Allen off the right side, brought down by Thomas Baskin. That right side of the Oklahoma offensive line, huge. Stamps at 309, Cavill at 310. Not bad when you're looking for a hole. Ball is on the 29-yard line for Oklahoma. Second down and six. Allen, the deep back, out of the eye. Runs it inside this time, but nothing doing there. Brought down by Tony Brackens. Number 98. Oklahoma showing a lot of different formations. They go to the pro set, they'll go to the eye, they'll go to the wishbone. A lot of the same plays, just disguised with different looks out of those formations. Alabama winning ugly once again today. Well, I don't know if it's ugly, but they are just barely getting by. <laughs> Jay Barker, though, isn't he tough? Just never loses. All he does is win. Third and four. You would think this would be a key conversion attempt on third down for Oklahoma. They toss it to the short side. Allen. It's going to depend on the spot, but I think he is short of the first down by maybe a yard. Victor Frazier, the free safety, came up and made the hit. It's going to be awfully close. They may have to measure this one. He's well within a yard. For the first down, they had to get down to the 23 and a half. They're at the just inside of 24. And McGee stays in the game. They're going to go for it, Tim. Texas couldn't convert its fourth and short, and we'll see if Oklahoma can here. Moore has the first down. What do you do? Simple. You give it to your 230-pound fullback. And you know what else you do? You go on a quick count. You get everybody up to the line of scrimmage, snap it right now. Don't even let the defense set. Just run it right at them. Boom, first sound. Oklahoma trying the middle on first down. And they find a lot of Texas resistance. 9.15 to play in the ball game, and Texas has a 17-7 lead. And that time now becomes a factor with 9-10 left. They've got to score here. They've got to start battling that clock. Hall comes out of the game. In comes Broderick Robertson. That tackle. DJ Mills split wide. McGee for Mills. Incomplete. And Mills wants a face guarding call. You know, and I think he's justified in asking for one. Victor Frazier never did turn around to locate the ball. And there was some contact. Take a look at the end of the play, see if we can pick it up. Here comes the ball, there's the contact. Frazier's never looking back for the ball to locate it. You don't look back, you make contact, that should draw a flag. One more look at it, Tim. 
I think Texas got away with one here. Watch this. Watch the end of the play. Boom. There's the contact. The left hand comes out. He's pushing him away. Oklahoma is four for nine on third down conversions. And Albert Hall comes onto the field and promptly calls a timeout. Look at the clear sky in the background of the Dallas skyline. Third down and long. Oklahoma four for nine on third down situations. Long count. Nikita pass. Complete and a first down. What a catch by the freshman Steve Alexander. But there's a flag down in the vicinity. Boy, they needed almost 10. Westbrook's going to be called for pass interference. Doesn't make any difference. Decline the penalty. Take the first down. Great second effort. Not only did Westbrook interfere with the contact before the pass was there, but then he missed the tackle. Steve Alexander, the freshman, using that big, strong frame of his to get position. And here we get the call. Pass interference, defense. It's declined. We have first down. So, you know, watch the left side of your screen and lock on to number 30, Westbrook. All right, here comes the drag across the middle from the tight end. Now, here comes the pass. Boom, contact right there. Before the ball comes, the flag is thrown immediately. Well, how's backfield? The wishbone. McGee keeps it himself and weaves his way down to the seven-yard line where he meets Chris Carter on the tackle. Oklahoma trails by 10 points with 8.20 to play. Barry Switzer, the former Sooner coach, used to call it Sooner magic, when they would come back from seemingly insurmountable deficits to win. And right now, the Sooners could use a little magic. They're still in good shape, though. They've got to capitalize and score here. Out of the wishbone, McGee again. Tiptoes over one tackler, Brackens, and is brought down in the middle of the field at the seven-yard line by Baskin. So it's third down. They can get a first down without getting into the end zone. And Gibbs knows he still needs two scores regardless. So at the very least, he's got to get a field goal here. But they want the whole thing now. They want the seven. Tim, this is the 15th play of this Oklahoma drive. It has been arduous and methodical, and here's James Allen. Allen can't get in. He's brought down at the five-yard line by Tyson King. All right, get the field goal, get the three on the board. The only problem with this is Scott Blanton, the kicker, is only four for seven in field goals, and he's also missed two extra points. So he's been inconsistent. Gibbs not entirely happy with his special teams this year. Place kicking part of it. Every kick is a thrill. <laughs> McGee obviously disappointed. Out of the hold of Jawan Penny. Scott Blanton from 22. Nails it. Now we're not going anywhere, folks. As Blanton is now 5 of 8 on the year. After making that one. And it's now 17 to 10. So Gibbs gets the score out of it. He knows he needs two scores, settles for the field goal. Blanton just kicks him through. So now they're within a touchdown and a two-point conversion of winning this football game with 640 left. Gary Gibbs mulling over the next 640 on the clock with his team trailing by a touchdown. Texas has two timeouts remaining. Oklahoma has two timeouts remaining. 640 left in the game. And it's a seven-point advantage for Texas. That last Oklahoma drive, pretty impressive. 16 plays, going 75 yards and using up 625 on the clock. But as we mentioned, time now becoming an issue if you're the Sooners. Clinton kicking off. Curtis Jackson at the five. He's got an alley. Action Jackson out at the 47 of Texas. A 42-yard return. 
You just mentioned special teams being a problem for Oklahoma. Here again, they're victimized by a big return. Boy, watch the cut that Jackson makes at the end of this play. He sees the wall now. He's got to cut back to the right. There's the line. And it opens up for him. Big, big return. And again, Oklahoma hurt by special teams. Jackson out of Plano, Texas. James Brown in at quarterback. It has been his afternoon. It has been his team. 17 for 21, a touchdown. And he's run for 40 yards. A counter. Coming to the middle of the field, Roderick Walker with light feet and sweet feet. Near the first down marker, the 42, an 11 yard pickup and a first down. Brought down by Anthony Fogel. Walker got through a hole that wasn't there. You know, he's had hamstring problems all year. He ran that time like, like a dart. I mean, he just kept winding his way through the traffic and picked up 10. This game, no stranger to great backs, especially from Texas. There's a guy named Earl Campbell who can play a bit of football. It's Gerald in motion. Brown on the keeper. Lots of room. Like that play. Because of the active pursuit of the Sooners, that play's been available to him all afternoon. Tim, I mentioned Earl Campbell. And the recruiting wars that go on between these two programs. It is so very intense. A lot of these players know each other from high school days. The buddies on their high school teams, Pop Warner teams. This is for border bragging rights. Walker up the middle down to the 32-yard line. What a difference a half makes. You know, Texas in the first half had only 73 yards rushing. This half, well over 121 yards. I remember Earl Campbell saying that he was looking for a sign from God before he was looking to sign to go for a school when he was being recruited. He was recruited by both Oklahoma and Texas. And Barry Switzer said, if I'd known that Earl was looking for a sign when he went to bed at night, I'd have hid under his bed and sang Boomer Sooner all night. <laughs> but we all know Earl ended up at Texas. Lucas in at fullback now. Walker the tailback. And the same play. But this time, Oklahoma got a beat on it. And there again, the young guy showing the composure of a veteran. He had the sideline, he could have run out of bounds, but that's not what they want to do now. He wants to stay in bounds and melt as much of the clock as possible in this drive. You mentioned the clock, there are about four and a half minutes to play. Well, I tell you what, James Brown has outdone himself today. So when does the quarterback controversy start? It's already started. <laughs> Shea Morenz. I'm trying to fuel the fire. Shea Morenz is a great talent, but what a job James Brown has done today. Surely raising a lot of eyebrows by his performance and opening a lot of eyes. He hands it off. Luke Kemp, scratch that, it was Kemp to the short side of the field, gaining maybe one. That run takes us under the four-minute mark. Oklahoma's defense needing a big play. Freeman has been a big play guy. Peters has played well today. But they need something now. It is third down and long for Texas. At the very least, you want to position the ball for a field goal. Lawson has a strong leg. There's a flag down. Brown's going to pass. Incomplete, in and out of the arms of his intended receiver. Should have been caught, but it was dropped by Eric Jackson. Rockermeyer is hurt. Slow getting up. Let's investigate the flag. It's against the horns. Boy, that hurts, too, because Texas was barely within field goal range. Dawson... His longest is a 50-yard field goal right now, or before that penalty, it would have been a 48-yarder. Now that moves him out of his range. Illegal motion. 
Offense decline. Fourth down. See, that's smart on Oklahoma's part. And in comes Phil Dawson. Now, I'm looking at the flags, Tim, and he seems to have the wind at his back. So he has a bit of an advantage, Dawson does. The ball is on the 31-yard line. So the attempt will come from 48 yards out. Again, I tell you, his longest in his career is 50 yards. This is 48. This would be huge for Texas. Would mean Oklahoma would need two scores. And he pushes this one right. And Oklahoma brings a collective huge sigh of relief. Boy, he had the distance. Dawson had an opportunity to put a nail in the Oklahoma coffin, but misses by that much. We'll be back. Oklahoma with the ball, 316 to play in the game. They trailed by seven. And McGee seems to have found a favorite target in his big freshman tight end, Steve Alexander. Another Oklahoma first down by Alexander. You know, when they recruited Alexander, he says, hey, coach, if I come to Oklahoma, I don't want a red shirt. I do want to play my freshman year. I want to start and make a couple catches. He's done all of that. A big body at 6'5". He has four catches for a total of 51 yards. McGee. For Mills. And he's got it. Mills out of bounds to the 17. As the Sooners march on. And again, Victor Frazier never located the ball. Take a look now at the right side. It's Mills and Frazier locked on one-on-one. -on -one. Now watch, it's pretty good coverage, but he never locates the ball, never comes back. Mills stays with it. Look at Mills, locked on that ball, comes behind Frazier and makes the catch behind his back. Nicely done by P.J. Mills. And in two plays, Oklahoma moves from the 31 to the 17. McGee fires another strike to the same guy. Mills downed at the nine-yard line by Bryant Westbrook. You know, P.J. Mills can be a game-breaker. He averages 18 yards every time he touches the football, including a 70-yarder against Syracuse that electrified the entire Oklahoma team. Watch this. This ball's thrown well. Again, Mills goes high. Boy, he's dangerous. You've got to lock him up with those arms. Good tackle after the catch. Penny and Hall split to the bottom of your screen. The draw to Moore. And Moore runs it into the middle part of the field, down to the seven-yard line, where he's brought down by Storman Norman Watkins. That'll take us down to the two-minute area of this game. A look at Texas's defensive coordinator, Gary Darnell. Boy, he really shook things up at Texas. He went from the 3-4 uh, defense instead of the old 4-3, but he knows his personnel and he's experienced. He's coached at Notre Dame in Florida. Likes a 3-4 scheme, which is based on speed and depth. Really not that much difference, is there, Tim? I mean, people talk about a 4-3 versus a 3-4, but there's not that much difference, isn't it? No, but you just put in another linebacker. You put in more speed back there. You can do more things. Under two minutes to play now in this ball game. Look at the timeout situation. Oklahoma trailing by seven points. McGee keeps it, and he surges forward over the right side. He's got the, for first, the first down. down. 147 to play, and it'll be first and goal for Oklahoma. Maybe there is some Sooner magic in the stadium today. Several things to consider now if you're Oklahoma. Number one, you've got to get it in the end zone. Number two, you want to go for the two-point conversion because you win, want to win the game. Forget the tie. Number three, you don't want to give too much time back to Texas. We'll see how this scenario plays out. Allen in motion. The give us to the fullback Moore. Who maybe, I mean maybe, got a yard. 
Clock running with 1.30 to play. That's all right. Let the clock run if you're an Oklahoma guy. Take your time. You don't want any mistakes down here. No offsides, no movement penalties. You want to execute. Don't even think about saying that word penalty if you're Oklahoma. Penny and Hall split to the bottom of your screen. Moore the only back. McGee looking into the end zone. Is it picked off? No. Almost. Tyson King almost sealed it for Texas. And you know what? Allen was wide open for Oklahoma. That was an ill-advised pass by that man, McGee. Picks are illegal, but they call this a rub off. The ball's almost picked off, but look, here are all white shirts. Allen's over in the corner all by himself. He had already passed them. Watson Brown, he's a cool customer. Maintaining his composure. But with one minute left in the game, now it is huge on third down. Third and goal, Oklahoma, McGee. Brought down at the three. They've got to go for it on fourth. Less than a minute to play. The clock running with 47 seconds to play. Watkins and Brackens made that last tackle, and the Oklahoma coaching staff calling for a timeout. I'm Mark Jones, along with Tim Brandt and Dean Blevins here at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas. Texas leads Oklahoma 17-10 with 43 seconds to play in the game. The Sooners have the ball. It is fourth and goal from the three-and-a-half-yard line. Oklahoma just took a timeout. They've got one left. It doesn't matter. They only have one play to score. It's fourth down. They've got to put pressure on the corner and give the option to McGee to pass or run. The story of the game, if you're just joining us, has been quarterback Shea Morenz, who has not played. His understudy, his fill-in, James Brown, has come in and done a masterful job engineering that offensive attack for Texas. Garrick McGee, meanwhile, going into this last series, was 9 of 15 passing for 133 yards with one interception. He's run the ball for 55 yards. And that is James Brown. Makovic talking to him in case he has to go in one more series. And a look at Shea Morenz, who has not played today because of a bad knee, a sprained knee. But all the pressure of the world right now is on McGee of Oklahoma. Not only do they need to get the touchdown here on fourth down, but then they have to go for the two-point conversion to win. And McGee trying to get those Oklahoma fans to make some noise. This is the ball game for them. Let's take a close look at the backfield set. Boy, this is what it's all about. Oklahoma, Texas, fourth down and goal. You have to score to win. This is why the Red River rivalry has had so much mystique and so much history and tradition and greatness. The reverse. One man to beat. Allen, no. They tried to get all the motion going one way and bring Allen to the backside. But watch 55, Stoney Clark. Here he comes, one on one. Bam! The hit, 6'1, 343 pounds. He broke down. He gave him one way to run and made the stop. The biggest play of his life. Stoney Clark. He's an English major. He's, re he's writing his own autobiography. Biggest, he's bigger than Rush Limbaugh. <laughs> watch 55, here he comes. Bam! Knocks him away from the goal line. The big man put a lot of giddy up in his gallop and got there in time. Oh, what a great play. They'll be taking him out to dinner tonight.
He was a defensive tackle the last two years. They moved him to nose guard, and he's flourished. The Texas defense, which last week gave up 34 points to Colorado, stones Oklahoma, and they have held the Sooners to just 10 points this afternoon. Downstairs to Dean. Guys, this is a, a significant game. I believe it's one now that Texas really believes it is back. It has beaten Oklahoma with a backup quarterback, with a lot of other great players out. OU now really becomes concerned, disappointed. Gary Gibbs has now brought six teams in favored and is now one and five. He said this is his best team since 87. Next is Colorado, Kansas, and Kansas State. Another flag on the play. Dean, let me ask you. Being an Oklahoma guy, former player down there, close to the situation, is Gibbs under any pressure? Well, he's done a remarkable job in academics and also keeping kids uh, in terms of the image. People in Oklahoma want to win like they do in Alabama, like they do at Texas. The pressure is to win. There's a lot of left to the season. Big disappointment. Yeah, Dean, and no doubt, Oklahoma boosters will point to the fact that Gary Gibbs has not done well against Colorado. Nebraska or Texas well Texas is the big one as far as the fans and Norman are concerned he's lost four out of the last five to Longhorns and with those bragging rights you get an extra boost in recruiting when you win this game I'll tell you that was close to being a safety 23 seconds remaining in the game Oklahoma wants the safety they're not going to get it though Officials marking it at the one-yard line. 23 seconds to go. Texas trying to make it five out of six wins against Oklahoma. The only hope the Sooners have now with 23 seconds left is to get a safety, then get the free punt to get the ball back. Twenty-three seconds to go, Tim. Unless Oklahoma forces Texas into the end zone and gets the safety, there is no way to stop the clock. Oklahoma has no timeouts left, and there's only 23 seconds left. Texas doesn't have to snap it again. James Brown. That'll do it. Like the James Brown song. Papa's got a, may not have a brand new bag, but Coach Makovic might have a brand new quarterback. <laughs> he did a great job today. Look at the cameras, the microphones all over. Brown, he's the new star, the new hero. A star is born on a clear afternoon here in Dallas, Texas at the Cotton Bowl. The Chevrolet most valuable players of the game are James Brown, who is 17 of 22, 152 yards passing for Texas, and Gerald Moore, who ran the ball 13 times for 76 yards with a touchdown for Oklahoma. But the big play of the game, made by Stoney Clark, who stones the Sooners. Came back on the misdirection. Allen trying to get around the corner to score. Now watch this. First, they turn him back inside, and here comes old big 55, Stoney Clark. 343 pounds and the biggest play of the game. The eyes of Texas smiling on the Longhorns this Saturday afternoon. Stay tuned for the thrifty car rental postgame report. Final score, 17 to 10.